Hello everyone and welcome back to the Flipped Classroom series on IGCSE Environmental Management. Today we're going to continue with Chapter 1, which is Rocks, Minerals and Their Exploitation. And we're going to be looking at Lesson number 2, which is all about extracting rocks and minerals. In this lesson, we're going to need to describe the two main methods of mining, which is surface and subsurface mining. And we'll need to think about what factors are taken into account by mining com companies when they're making the decision to extract rocks and minerals during the mining process. So let's get started. What I want to do is give you a guide to the different steps that mining companies go through when they make the decision to open a mine. Step number one is being able to find the rock or mineral that you want to mine. So how can a mining company do this? Well, there are several steps or several um, techniques that you can use. If you're looking for mineral or rocks to mine, then this process is called prospecting. One common way of prospecting is using remote sensing technology. For example, here in the diagram, you can see we have an aircraft which is flying over an area of land and taking um, photographs of that area. These photographs can then be um, processed and used to try and see if there are any rocks or minerals on the Earth's surface which might have the potential to be mined. Other, te other technolo uh, technology can also be used, for example, drones. This method does have its drawbacks, however. For example, if the weather conditions are not suitable and it's too cloudy, then you will not be able to use this remote sensing technique. Another remote sensing technique is done using satellites. If you have a naturally occurring radioactive material, for example, um, uranium, and you want to mine it, you can use satellites to pick up the unique radioactive signature that these materials emit. This data can then be processed and used by geologists to try and locate the locations of different rocks and minerals. Using satellites and remote sensing is beneficial because you're able to use the satellite to um, prospect a very large area of the Earth's surface very, very quickly. It also doesn't need to take into account the weather conditions because this technique can be used when the um, weather conditions are very cloudy. However, it is very expensive to use satellites and you need to process a lot of data if you're using this kind of remote sensing technique. Another prospecting method is the use of seismic waves. As shown in the diagram here, you can use seismic waves, which are vibrations sent, into the, sent down into the Earth's crust, which can then be reflected by different layers or um, minerals within the Earth's crust and picked up by sensors on the Earth's surface. Geophysicists use this data to try and locate and find different deposits of rocks or minerals which are underneath the ground. Once you have found the rock or mineral that you want to extract, then it's always a good idea to go to the location or the site in person and to take some samples to try and find out what is the quality of the deposit which is there. If you think it's a site potentially worth mining, then you need to move on to step number two. This is where you evaluate if the deposits are actually worth mining. So how do we do step number two then? There are several factors that you need to take into account when you make the decision to mine. First up is geology, or the rocks which you find in that area. When considering the geology, the best rock type for mining is a rock type which is very hard or stable. This means if you're doing, uh, for example, open pit mining or sh shaft mining, there's a lower possibility of you experiencing any sort of collapse, which makes it safer for the miners. You also need to take into, account, in, into consideration the overburden. This is a distance from the surface all the way down to the layer of rock or mineral that you want to extract. The deeper the rock or mineral, then the more difficult it is or the more expensive it is to mine. And if the overburden is um, particularly large, 
then your only option might be shaft mining or subsurface mining, which is extracting the mineral using shafts very deep underground. The final thing that you need to consider when we think about geology is the size of the deposit. If you have a very small deposit size, then it might not be economically worthwhile um, opening a mine in that area. Also, in also, not only the size, but the quality of the deposit or the quality of the ore is very um, important to consider when you are mining. The second factor that we need to take into consideration is the environmental impact assessment. All mining companies need to complete this assessment before they are granted permission to open a mine. And it takes into consideration the landscape before the mine is opened, um, what is happening in that area during the mining process, and what the company has in plan um, when it comes to um, post mining and how they are going to restore the landscape. So there are some questions that mining companies need to ask or um, need to answer when they are doing this assessment. For example, how are you going to ensure that the damage to the environment is as limited as, it, uh, as possible? For example, how can you ensure that habitats are preserved and the different plants and animal species there are not damaged? You also want to take into consideration local people's views and try to make the disruption to local people's lives as limited as possible. You also have to take into consideration the safety of the mine and the miners. And finally, once the mining is finished, how are you going to restore the landscape? So the, the scar left behind or the impact left behind from the mine is as limited as possible. The third factor that we need to consider is all about accessibility. Let's look at this mine, for example. When the mining company was about to open this mine, they would have to take into consideration how easy it is to access by road. This is because the different material which has been mined will need to be transported away from the mine to the processing plant. You also need to have your equipment um, be transported into the mine. So roads are also necessary to do this. If the mine is in a very remote location, then the mining company might need to build access roads, which can be very, very costly. Furthermore, you need to take into consideration the climate and the terrain. If the mineral or rock you want to mine is in a very mountainous area, then it might be too, too inaccessible to mine. Or if it's in an area where the climate is very harsh, for example, very um, cold regions covered in ice, then this might make it very difficult to access also. And the final thing you need to consider is the processing. Generally, mining companies want to locate the mine as close to processing plants as possible to keep costs down. But the processing of mine material requires a lot of water. And if the mine is in an area which is very arid or very dry, then it might not be pro uh, possible to process the material close to the mine. This is something else that mining companies need to take into consideration before opening the mine. So the final factor we need to think about then before we open our mine is about supply and demand. Let's have a look at this graph here. We can see that iron ore from 2000 onwards has had a very steady increase of both supply and demand. And supply has always been slightly higher than the demand. So what does that mean? The profit from a working mine depends on the changes in supply and demand. You want to try and keep a balance. Supply is how much of that rock or material you are mining and putting into the market. The demand is how much the market needs that specific material um, or rock. Supply and demand has a big impact on the economic success of a mine. The general rules to follow is, if the ore you're mining is in high demand, that means that many people want it, 
then it's more likely that, that your mine is going to open because the price of that specific ore or rock is going to be very, very high. If the ore or material that you're mining is in very low demand, then the price is going to be low. And this means that it's less likely that your mine is going to open. A reason for the price being very low could be that there is too much supply in the market and this will drive down the prices. The third step is the extraction process, the actual mining taking place itself. There are two options you have when it comes to extracting rock. You can either do surface mining or subsurface mining and these processes have um, different names. For example, here we can see a surface mine, which is also known as open cut, open pit or open cast mining. There is also a surface mining um, technique called strip mining, where you strip layers from the land um, away layer by layer. And this is commonly used in, for example, coal mining. Subsurface mining is when you use shafts to um, access rock which is deep below the ground. Um, here we can see there are different options when using shafts. You can use a vertical shaft to reach rock which is very um, deep underground or you can use a horizontal shaft for example um, seen here at A where the shaft is going horizontally through the side of the mountain. So let's think in a little bit more detail about these mining techniques then. Surface mining takes place on the earth surface and the top layer of the earth surface is removed. As we said, these types include open cast, open pit, open cut and strip mining. When this is done, the topsoil or the vegetation needs to be removed. This is also known as the overburden. This can destroy landscapes and particularly um, habitats for plants and animals. However, this kind of mining is relatively safe and easy to do. In comparison, subsurface mining takes place underground. This includes deep mining and shaft mining. This creates less damage to the ecosystem because the area of land on the Earth's surface which is disrupted is relatively smaller and it involves digging shafts deep into the earth's surface. However, this kind of mining is more dangerous than surface mining, and potentially it can be life-threatening if disasters occur. For example, if the shaft collapses, it can trap miners underground. So let's take a look at some key vocabulary for this lesson. How do we look for rocks or minerals that we want to mine? We need to use prospecting. There are several methods that we use for prospecting. For example, remote sensing. This is using aircraft, drones or satellites to take measurements or pictures of the Earth's surface. If we want to prospect under the Earth's surface, then we can use seismic waves. Once we have found our rock or mineral that we want to mine, we need to take into consideration some factors to see if it's worthwhile to open the mine. For example, the geology. This includes the overburden or how deep your deposit is buried under the ground. We also need to do an environmental impact assessment. And we need to make sure that our area that we are mining is accessible. We also need to consider the supply. If the supply of a rock or mineral that you want to mine is too high, then the price of that rock or mineral will be lower and it might not be economically um, viable to open the mine. We also need to think about the demand. Is there enough demand in the market, which means people want to buy that rock or mineral? Once we have decided to start mining, then we need to think about how we are going to mine. Are we going to use surface mining techniques? For example, open pit. Or this is also known as strip mining. Or are we going to use subsurface mining techniques? For example, shaft mining. So that's the end of our um, flipped classroom lesson today. And we now should know the two main methods of rock extraction, 
surface mining and subsurface mining. And we should know the different factors that mining companies take into consideration when they are making their decision to extract the rocks or minerals. If you have any questions, please get in contact via Ting Talk. And remember, good, good study, day, day up.